Hey, welcome back. Uh, this is our third episode. Uh, we've got Morgan McCaskey. This is uh, Cleveland Rocks Shop Talk. So we've finally decided on a title. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, we're just going to talk today about uh, Morgan's music and what makes her tick and all the, all the interesting stuff. So thanks a lot for tuning in. So hello, Morgan. Welcome. Hello. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, what does the back of your baseball card look like? <laughs> I did used to collect baseball cards, side note. Um, I'm a Cleveland native, born and raised, um, have tried to leave a couple times, have ended up staying, and I'm really glad I'm here now. Um, really love the city. Um, I've been doing music since I was just shy of four years old, started my first piano lessons, so a good while now. Um, have a big family. Love original music, love the local scene. Um, I work at an arts nonprofit based in Cleveland Heights. Um, I've been teaching privately for over 15 years um, and gig and do a myriad of other things, but my I work in the music world um, full time and it's a privilege to do so. Cool. So piano was your first instrument. Would you consider it to be your primary instrument or have you transitioned over to something else by this point? Good question. Um, yeah, so I I started with a program called Suzuki Piano, um, which is just a, a classical pedagogical method that started in Japan. And um, it focuses on ear training. So at a very young age, um, students are able to perform at a higher level, even though they can't read music. That sort of comes later um, as you start to read in school. Um, and then I went to a camp called Interlochen Arts Academy when I was 15, 16, um, and I I had started guitar lessons when I was like 10 and just really took to it and um, kind of made the choice at that camp in grade 10 to switch. I, I started pursuing jazz piano and then um, really got into songwriting and, and guitar styling as well. So I think to answer that question, I am both our primary instruments, but I, I play a lot more guitar these days. To get more into the conceptual part of things, what is music to you? Oh, wow. Going deep. Um, fundamentally, I think it's vibration. Um, from found everywhere in the natural world. Um, music, you know, what is it? Four minutes and 44 seconds of silence The and where uh, the composer's name is escaping me right now, too early, but um, he would go and just whatever musical hall this piece was being performed in, there was just silence and we would just listen for a pencil dropping or someone coughing or sneezing and that was considered music. So um, I think it, at its base, music is vibration and then sounds and pitches and that are derived from that. And then genre-wise, that's that's a more specific question, but... Yeah, I think that's how I'd answer that. No, I like that answer. Um, if you couldn't write music, is there something else that you would do for artistic expression? Yeah, I, I love visual art. Um, I studied portraiture and life drawing for a long time. I love printmaking. Um, I just took a class last week, actually, of life drawing. That was super fun. Um, I couldn't really see a way to make that into a career, so I just do it as a hobby and for the love of it. But yeah, working with my hands, um, and primarily two-dimensional visual art. Do you think that you're the same person sitting in front of me as you are on stage, or do you adopt a persona or, or some kind of you know, altered state while you're uh, performing? <laughs> altered state. Well, it depends on what happens before the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I try, I try to just be myself. I, I really need to work at talking. Um, you know, and engaging the audience more, but I try to just be be honest and let the songs speak for themselves. And um, I try to be the same person. However, there's performance. <laughs> performance is its own thing, right? So um, you try to break that third wall, but it's you want to give the people what they what they want, which is try to play play and sing the best you can, have good delivery, um, something I think all musicians are always striving for. Um, and 
whatever, sometimes that means emotions are set aside. You know, you have a bad day. I do try to like collect myself to, to give a good performance, which doesn't necessarily negate um, negativity that may have transpired earlier in the day, but finding a way to channel that such that someone else who's taken time to come and support local music so that they're still, their presence and their time is still being honored. So that's sort of a meandering roundabout answer. I don't know if that makes sense. No, but. no, it, it makes total sense to me. Yeah. Um, at least from the perspective of being a performer, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you could, you could channel that negative. Let's let's just say it is something negative. You had a crap day at work or something. Um, you rock out all the harder. Find a way to relieve that stress, and maybe there will be gift for you in the performative element that can help like heal some of that um, darkness that happened earlier in the day. And you could still audience members could still um, experience a really good show. So for either. Either and both, performance and writing. Could you tell me a little bit about some artists that have influenced you? Sure. Um, uh, one artist that is inspiring me right now has been for the past several years. I kind of found out about her on like social media before she was big is Madison Cunningham. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She's up for some Grammys this year um, for a performance and I think a Roots Folk record. Um, She's she's young. She's only in like her mid twenties, but um, I've described her to friends and fellow musicians as the Joni Mitchell of our era, just a powerhouse of vo vocal ability, um, technical prowess on her instrument, sort of unconventional guitar stylings, influenced by like Jeff Buckley and some of the the jazz folks in the L.A. scene um, and songwriting chops. I mean, just. So she's a she's a big influence currently. I really really love the guitarist uh, Julian Lodge, whom I'm nowhere near to hold, like I can't hold a candle. But his he's a modern jazz guitarist, um, but really influenced by traditional American music. So bluegrass, um, rock. You can hear some country elements, but just like prolific playing. That's that's beautiful and simple. Um, really cool tones. I love uh, the producer Blake Mills, anything that he touches um, just sonically like and he's an excellent guitar player but he plays to the song um, and really finds unconventional ways of capturing sounds that from 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 instruments, traditional instruments, but they sound otherworldly. Like I think his record Hi Ho came out in 2014. And the first time I listened to it, I didn't know exactly what I was listening to instrumentally. Um, and that doesn't happen a lot and it was fascinating. So those are some people that have and do continue to inspire me. That's cool. I, I've only like, I'll have to, I'll have to check them out. Okay. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Joni Mitchell fan. I, yeah. If I could see a, you know, an artist that's doing yeah. that kind of thing. Madison played today. at the Beachland Ballroom like in 2021, I think. And it's like, this is probably the last time she's going to play here because she, I hope it's not the last time, but right. but, right. Uh, but she's just getting so big. Um, but I'm I'm a total nerd for, for tone. I like a lot of jazz and classical, but I also like pop and rock. I've been digging like the new Turnstile record. <laughs> it's That's not really the kind of stuff that you hear in my music too much, but I haven't put out anything in a while. So That actually goes into, uh, I'm going to skip forward to, uh, <laughs> uh, to a question that's completely related to that. Are there any styles or genres of music that you believe might surprise somebody who listens to your music or sees you on stage? Like any styles that you're into um, mm. that somebody would say, oh, well, that's you know, that might not really come through in, in your performance. Is there, is there anything like way off the wall like that? <laughs> um, I do, I do like heavy music. Um, I like slow core. <laughs> I'll listen from anything to sun kill moon to turn style to, uh, like punk stuff, you know, I'll just blast the Ramones. Um, I'll listen to a tribe called quest. Um, I like old school hip hop a lot. Um, I love anything that Chris Dave, the drummer, what he does. I think he's got a new trio performance in New York City coming up with Pino Palandino and um, Isaiah Sharkey. And they're just killer, you know, jazz, neo soul. It's like top of the line. Like you just have to go see it live. So I love, I love all of that. Um, yeah. I don't know if that would surprise people, but. Yeah, you never know what, what, 
I, I, I always feel weird about that question because you never really know what would surprise anyone. But like I kinda, if it's I good, like it I don't care what genre it is. Yeah. If it's good, right? It's classical. If it's bluegrass, doesn't matter. One of the guitarists that I work with, he has like a, a daughter that's maybe fourteen months old, and uh, uh, she really likes Sun Kill Moon. <laughs> when you brought that up, it made me think of it. I was, it's such dark music. Yeah, I went over to get a, a get like. A, uh, dinner and a beer with him like a while ago and his daughter's running around and he's like hey uh what do you want to listen to and she says sun kill moon <laughs> like she like of course you know he's showing her the music that he likes yeah but, you know she she likes it yeah and i think that's unconventional for a, a for little a child kid. to really get into but that's hey. cool i mean yeah. i i've been really digging i'm hoping to go see the smile when they come into town that sort of radiohead offshoot project um i like odd meter and stuff like that so cool have you ever been in a creative slump and if so <laughs> how do you get out of it yeah uh, oh of course yes um i haven't i haven't put out recorded music in a long time i've been playing my new songs for a while now whenever i do play i haven't done too many shows gone through a bunch of like personal life changes in the past five years so that when you're in when i've been in more of a unstable place personally relational changes moving that sort of thing um i it i tend to go into a bit more of survival mode like all right i need to work i need to take care of my body i need to eat healthy i need to sleep i need to go to therapy and if those are the only things that i can do usually my creativity in terms of producing um dwindles you know when i'm on that baseline survival mode but i've been so how to get out of that, I would say for me, it's been taking care of my, my needs, like my Maslow's hierarchy, like baseline needs, um, seeing, ensuring that those are met, um, getting involved in community. And when I feel more um, stable, then usually music just comes. I am much better with um, music than I am with lyrics. I, I feel like I'm a pretty beginner lyricist. Um, and my uh, fiance is a really good writer, and so she oftentimes gives me feedback um, lyrically and has been even when we were just friends before we were dating. Um, but usually, listening to other people, other folks' music inspires me to to practice or to to write. Um, but yeah, I think mental, physical, and emotional health usually taking care of that stuff. If you could play a show with any musician. Who might you pick? On a local level or anyone? Uh, it's open-ended. You could you could answer one, <laughs> the other, or both if you like. Oh, man. There are so many good local musicians. Um, I'd love to, like, open for Herzog. Um, I used to teach at a music school in a studio next to their guitar player, David. Um, they're, they're great. I love those guys. Um, that's a local band. Um, I would love to to play a gig with um, Emily Keener. I know her. We know each other. She's fantastic young talent. Um, on a more national or <laughs> international level, um, I think it'd be really fun to uh, to play with like some of the folks I mentioned. But I'd feel it probably too sheepish because they're so excellent. Um, like musically, I think I would just feel very intimidated. Um, so I don't know. It'd be cool to like open for Brandy Carlisle or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be crying through her whole set. But So uh, do you have a lyrical line from any song, either yours or somebody else's, that just sticks with you? Mm. Well, um, one that's been in my head in the past year is a line from dun 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 bright eyes <laughs> another traveling song mm -hmm. um, i'm not i'm not surprised but i'm never quite prepared i feel like that's you know i i still consider us in the covid time even though life is more normalized but i think a lot of us have experienced incredible loss or just change whether it's people we know dying or um and and so having experienced that personally, that line's just been in my head like, oh, 
we have to go back to masking or so-and-so's grandparent died. Not surprising, but just the arresting of the heart. So that, that might be a pretty liberal, global, there, there might be a li- um, did I say liberal? I didn't mean to say liberal. <laughs> um, that, that would be a, maybe a globally felt lyric, but I definitely feel it personally. Is there any artist or album that you wish that more people knew about? I'm glad that more people know about Madison um, Cunningham because nobody did for a while. And I was sending like this one bootleg Instagram video <laughs> around. Um, a group that I think is really, really great. Uh, they kind of have the Crosby Spills, Nash and Young vocal harmonies going around. Um, Francis Luke Accord. Hmm. They're based out of Chicago, and my friend Katie Van Dusen plays violin with them, and they're great. They're they're an excellent live band. They do a lot as a duo or, or trio format when Katie plays with them. Um, but I would love to see them. They've been growing in popularity, but I think more people need to know about them. Cool. I'll have to check them out because yeah, I ask this question not for anybody who might be watching. I ask this for me personally every time. Cool. So, yeah. No. <laughs> no, of course it's rare. But. Check out Francis Luke Accord. <laughs> uh, so going local, uh, what is your favorite thing about Cleveland? Mm. I like that Cleveland is a big, small town. Um, it's big enough that you don't get bored. There's plenty of stuff to do here in terms of live music to see, sporting events if that's your thing, vibrant restaurant, art. Um, brewery scene. Um, our park systems are excellent. Um, I'm a. I love being outdoors. I love biking. I love hiking. And I, there's always new parks to explore, new pathways that are being built for bicyclists. And then I have to, of course, mention um, our little Great Lake. Like being next to a body of water is invaluable. I don't think I could live in any other part of Ohio. I really don't. I've been to a lot of them. Just access to water. You are not the first one to say this yeah. in, in this interview series. It's kind of nice. I, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it is kind of nice having it there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, just ecologically for bird migration and everything. Yeah. I mean, at, it, it, during COVID, you know, like many people, I was basically alone. And um, so I spent a lot of time. I live in Cleveland Heights, and I would ride my bike down Martin Luther King Boulevard and, like, come to the, the pier there near the um, the park and just like watch the light patterns change on the water and the different flocks of birds. And it's just, besides the inherent ecological benefits, it's just stunningly beautiful. So if I ever move, um, which I don't plan to right now, um, but I'm young, so you never know, but I want to live near water. (laughs) And I like like everybody else too. <laughs> I bought a kayak for my buddy mm-hmm. and we kayaked a bunch and like we can socially distance and still have fun and try new activities. So yeah. I did the exact same thing. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's great. There's uh, uh what is that? Uh if you if you roll up to I think it's Pickle Bills. Oh my uh, gosh. The, you can you can you yeah. can come up to their dock and uh and if it's the weekend they'll They'll come out and you can, you can get like a line in Kugel or something. No way. Yeah, I've yeah, never gone going. out that far. Well, yeah. I, no, I've never been to that particular marina. Mm-hmm. I, I live over by Headlands. So oh, okay. It, it's real easy for me to just go right down there. Yeah. It's only a, like an eight minute drive. Nice. Um, what is your favorite thing about the Cleveland music scene? Mm, mm. <sighs> Questions that require like... Um, a singular response are difficult for me. Yeah, I, I, it, it's so easy to ask and yeah. use the phrasing favorite. Right, right. You know, because it kind of, but it's so difficult to answer. So mm-hmm. if you don't have a, if you don't want to say a favorite, you could say what is, uh, what is the thing that you really like about the Cleveland music scene? Yeah, something I really appreciate is the congeniality and community spirit between mis- musicians of all stripes. Um, I, I think that the scene is very supportive. Um, you see older artists sort of shepherding younger artists, um, booking them uh, as openers, and, and there's a lot of reciprocity um, and goodwill. Um, at least in my experience and, you know, what I've observed, uh, 
can't say anything about fights between band members who've had any a few too many beers right. and a late night but like overall like musician to musician or group to group i've seen a spirit of respect and appreciation and we're in this together so i think that's great for a big small town and it helps helps the scene as a whole continue to provide um diverse um and regular live music for people to go to yeah do you have a favorite local venue to play or a local venue that you particularly like to play the beachland <laughs> good answer <laughs> <laughs> no really i i do i i think the beachland truly offers diverse music it's not just punk it's not just rap it's it's everything and um having a smaller club and a what four to five hundred person ballroom um great food great drinks like since they've updated the sound system it just is sounding super good in the ballroom like yeah cindy's awesome like it's so convenient for people to get to off the highway and there's plenty of stuff to walk around and do it's i i i love I love the halls. I love the grog shop. I've done private stuff. It's it's all really great. But if I had to pick one, it'd be the Beachland. Besides Cleveland, if you had to live somewhere else, where might you live? Um, either outside of uh, Portland, Oregon, or like Vancouver, BC. Cool. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot country. <laughs> water <laughs> yes <laughs> mountains i did a, a bike trip in 2013 from portland to seattle just along the pacific coastal highway that was a trip of a lifetime we just put hammocks up um like when there were no cars took our bikes and ran into the woods and put hammocks up along and slept you know in the trees and traveled really light we had um deer baloney like strapped to the back of our bikes and i fell in love with the country you know just the trees are amazing, the, the mountains. And there's there's arts there as well. You know, you can go see shows. And Portland kind of reminded me of Cleveland. I biked around it. It's like a big, small town. And, and you know, um, depending on American politics, Canada seems like a friendly place. So. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I think it's a good answer. Hmm. If you could go back in time and say anything to yourself in high school, what might you say? <laughs> Oh, so many things. Um, are we speaking, I'm assuming, from like an artistic lens? To be honest, you could justify it in any way. No. If you wanted to go back in time and say, don't drive on February 8th, 2014, <laughs> there's a jerk within a semi. Like, you know, yeah. like you could you go back in time and say anything you like mm -hmm. for any reason. <laughs> sure. I probably would say something bit more heart forward, like um, be yourself and it will be okay. <laughs> nice. And just keep, just keep, just keep making and don't, don't be afraid there. You're not alone. And uh, there's enough love. There's enough love. Yeah. Cool. I'm being all serious. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can be however you want. Okay. That's, uh, this that's is just the point. Me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there a surprising skill that you might have? Hmm. Well, during the pandemic, like many musicians, there were no gigs. Um, I hadn't taken um, the position at Roots of American Music yet. Um, teaching was limited to Zoom, which was tricky. I'd never used it prior to the pandemic, so there was a lot of... Uh, was a lot of learning at the same time, but I took a job at um, my local garage and like was doing oil changes and brake jobs and basic car maintenance. And I really liked that. Um, I like doing projects. I helped my friend put a patio in his backyard and we, you know, put in some uh, French drains and redirected the water. I like making things better and working with my hands. So. I don't know if that's surprising. People who know me, that's not surprising. But projects like, oh, sure, let's come over and paint this or let's figure out how to make that. Is there a skill that you wish you had? That's more easy to answer, yes. I I wish, so I come from a big family. I have five siblings, four sisters, one brother. My sisters all took dance lessons. I did tap for like a year, but I wish I'd stuck with it. I wish that I, um, and now that I'm saying this out loud, it's kind of like 
me reminding myself to hold myself accountable. I need to take some dance lessons. I Not that I want to become a professional dancer. I just want to uh, get more comfortable in my, my body. It's cool. definitely a skill I wish I had. And also rock climbing. I have like my ballet license, but I haven't done it in a long time. So I wish I would, did that more. What is something like a minor luxury that you absolutely cannot live without? <laughs> Oh, I am a coffee snob. I was a barista when I was an undergrad. Like, so I buy really good quality whole bean fresh coffee and grind it every day and make a pour over and stuff. And yeah, I just can't do Dunkin' Donuts. I just can't. So would I survive? Yes, but that's a little embarrassing that, yeah, mm -hmm. good coffee and that like six shooter good rising star good but i can't just do generic starbucks uh no offense starbucks but if you could spend a year in the hyperbolic time chamber mm. which is a fictional location in which an entire year happens for every single day that happens in the regular world so you spend it's just one day and you have an entire year to yourself in this time chamber what do you do mm. with that time so i don't have to consider the normal demands of life right like uh, we could imagine that food is more or less provided for okay. you if okay. you wanted to like spend your time cooking i suppose you know like learning how to yeah. cook something incredible or whatever you could get all the ingredients you would need but uh but yeah, you're just you're in there and you your basic needs are taken care of. Okay. You don't have any obligations, time sensitive. It's like you just get to take one day off of work mm -hmm. and you get a whole year to work with. Well, if I'm limited to one activity, it would be making music, writing, recording, arranging, because I can get lost in that for a long time. Cool. Yeah. This one this one might take a little bit of thinking. Uh, you're getting brunch. You can invite three guests. Anybody you want, they have to attend. Who might you invite? <laughs> um, they have to attend. So thinking broader than my actual real life sphere of friends. Right. Okay. Yeah, like if you if you if you said, oh, I I'd like you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know the Queen of England or something. Right. Yeah. The they, King of England. Yeah, excuse me. You the, rest in peace. Uh, Do they? Can I pull from the past um, or present day? Why not? Yeah, you anywhere. If you want to invite Past, present, Napoleon, future? go for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it'd be off the cuff. It'd be neat to meet with people from kind of different sectors. So like, I'm thinking, like Mother Teresa would be cool because um, she dedicated her entire life to service um, to God, and yet self-reportedly didn't experience the pre any divine presence for many years until her death. And yet she still continued um, this, this life of service and poverty in accordance with her vows and um, is obviously well revered and well known. But I'd be curious just to hear an honest uh, account of what it felt like to continue on without any divine encounters out of that conviction, like what could drive her to to live that way. So that's sort of from the religious sector. Um, I think it'd be really, really neat to have brunch with President Obama um, as the first um, African-American person to be elected president and just how he felt um, in a predominantly white world. Um, just. I mean, he's written about this extensively, but I'd, or just shoot hoops after brunch. I don't know. Right. I suck at basketball, but um, from the arts, I think I, I think I would probably pick um, uh, I'd probably pick Blake Mills, producer out of LA. He's only a handful of years older than me, but just hearing his musical journey more and nerding out about gear stuff and production tips. And I guess that's who I'd pick Mother Teresa, President Obama and Blake Mills. <laughs> I like that. That's a good, it's a good, it's a good spread. <laughs> 
Have you ever done a performance that you regret? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, and it, it begs the question, what do you regret? regret? Like the taking the gig itself, but most of the time it's been in, in respect to uh, a poor performance or, you know, something like singing an off key and just being entirely embarrassed by that. I'm learning to let that stuff go. Um, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, have you ever been in trouble with the law? I've gotten a speeding ticket. But if you're talking about anything more than that, oh, well, this isn't, this isn't anything too bad. But, um, when I was in high school, I played in like this indie rock folk band and we, after band practice one night, we're having like a fire and <laughs> this is how nerdy we were. We liked Lord of the Rings and stuff, and um, we each had like a pipe out of which we would smoke tobacco and try to wax philosophical. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made it like a fire in the backyard, and we were at the drummer's house, and his backyard butted up against these like apartments, and somebody called the cops because I guess the flames were leaping far into the air as the person described, and this big fire truck shows up, and they're like, put it out! Um, and you know no uh no evil motives there but um it was kind of funny and it was upsetting because fire trucks and everything and his dad was pretty upset as i recall so yeah. that's cool <laughs> yeah the lord of the rings and the pipe puts me in mind i bought i bought my brother a, a long stem a big, a big long stem pipe once for yeah. uh for christmas i believe and uh he instantly opened it up and named it second breakfast oh my gosh Probably with the intention of smoking jazz cabbage out of it, but, <laughs> but still, he named it Second Breakfast, and I thought that was very fitting. For yes, this large like church warden style pipe. It's just pleasant that everything cools down and becomes very mellow by the time it gets to you. Yeah. Uh, Don't smoke, kids. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Do you have a seemingly unreasonable hill that you will die on? <laughs> you should ask my partner this question um i'm a highly organized person i think just with the nature of the work i do and lifestyle i lead i have to i've tried to not always but i try to really stay on top and i'm always usually juggling a lot of things sometimes to an unhealthy degree um so i don't know if anything's really worth dying for but um I can't, I can't, it's hard for me to endure or tolerate disorganization or just like, like clutter that like my physical space affects my mental state of being. So like I was raised in a big family. My mom was super organized. I grew up with like weekly chores, you know? And so I still operate that way for better or for worse. So like when you're done with a dish, let it cool down, wash it out, don't sink the pan for four days right. kind of thing. So I think like that kind of stuff um, to be like have a housemate or significant another that couldn't make any good faith effort to uh, that, that would be pretty darn difficult. And I think there might be crying on the hill if not dying. <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense to me. Yeah, that's a pretty practical thing, but it's the first thing to come to mind. You get to be mayor for a day. Mm. Um, what do you sign into law? Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. You know, the first thing we need to do is uh, bridge that Democratic-Republican divide, and let's focus on infrastructure. Because I'll tell you what, these Cleveland roads, they are bad, my friends. They are bad and a little little pothole fill in here and there won't do the trick. We need to sequester money from the state, from, from national funds, and have a resurfacing program in place for the next 50 years and start on that post-taste. <laughs> I think that would be one thing that I would focus on because I think most people would know you, you can lose a tie rod like that it, unless you're driving like you're drunk, you know, because there's so many potholes. And... <laughs> I have a friend and he, he works as a landscape architecture and literally when we get together, we'll oftentimes talk about roads. And it's like, you understand, right? You understand. Yes. Have you been on this road? No, tell me about it. You know, so roads, hopefully everybody can get behind infrastructure. Um, signing into law. 
Oh, gosh. I would also, kind of in a similar vein, I used to take our public transport system here very regularly, and I haven't been on an RTA bus in a while. The train seems to be doing okay. But people that I've conferred, with whom I've conferred regarding the bus system, it could probably use a little love. I'll leave it at that since I'm not a transportation expert. Um, and uh, I would want to. I would want to just see what's. I've, there's been so much gentrification going on in Cleveland. It's one thing to like give. I think the Waterloo Arts District did this maybe what ten years ago. Incentivized artists to come, live and work here, um, to promote revitalization. Um, I find that different than uh, simply bulldozing old infrastructure, putting in new roads. Um, I know it's a complicated matter, but I wonder if there are ways to sustainably reinvest in the communities indigenous to particular locales and lift up their voices and make their concerns as important as the rich people predominantly Caucasian who have agendas um, and and tend to overlook the little guy um, and and really really value those without means um, so yeah finding creative ways if we're building putting in new businesses or um, or or roadways to make make that more equitable let's say let's take ohio city if we, there's an old building that's uh its owner is struggling financially and um doesn't have the resources to keep things going but the locals love it let's say it's a cafe this is just an example instead of only looking at things through a profit loss statement lens a more human lens like all right well we're going to put this hip new bar here and for we'll sign an agreement for a 12 month period we're going to donate x amount of our proceeds to help you give your business a facelift and make small business loans more accessible and available even teaching people about that so that less people are overlooked and forgotten so trying more along the social line, social justice lines and equ equitability, equity. Excuse me. Nice. I've had one cup of coffee. <laughs> I feel like with uh, <clears throat> with how you approach that answer, you probably could run for office. <laughs> like, oh dear, <laughs> no. Uh, I know that's easy to say and hard to do. I know that everything costs money, and it will always cost more than we think. But just what kind of part of the reason I do the work I do at the nonprofit. Um, is because there are so many portions of the city that are not hip. They're not destination places for people that are middle class and have 50 bucks to spend, 100 bucks to spend, you know, and what kind of, um, <laughs> how can we bring awareness and attention to those parts of the city since we are all brothers and sisters, like, I know that might sound a bit utopia, but like, how, how can we strive for equity and justice and sustainability as a city where we don't live, where we're not afraid of each other? Um, and I think like music is a great way to do that. Record stores, cafes, these are, this is where stuff is made and relationships are forged. And, and how can we, yeah, how can we lift up our neighbor as well as ourselves? I don't know. That's, I'm interested in that personally, but if I were mayor, I'd try to look into that from a different lens. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that was a great answer. Um, rock, paper, or scissors, and why? Oh, man. I'll go with a rock, because you can just smash. Nice. And even though the paper can technically cover it, you could smash that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you win a free trip to go into space. Do mm. you go? Yes, definitely. I was obsessed. I had NASA Legos. I, there was a movie that came out in the mid late eighties called Space Camp. I loved it. Um, yes, definitely. I've always wanted to go to space. Wanted to be in the like zero gravity simulator thing. Um, yes. 
these ones are quick. Uh, do you have a favorite? But uh, but if you don't have a favorite, you can just ask. Or you just answer with a uh, uh, I like. Okay. Um, is there an alcoholic or is there a drink, either alcoholic or normal type, that mm-hmm. you would say is your favorite? Yes, I love beverages. Um, love love the making, whether they be cocktails or coffee drinks. Um, so in the non-alcoholic sector, um, a really well-made cup of coffee, I'd say. I love sparkling water too, but a really good cup of coffee. And in the alcoholic sector, um, I love I love scotch. Um, Lagavulin, Macallan, Lafroy. I love I love scotch. Um, generally with a big rock, maybe a little slice of lemon to express those oils and just give it lifted up a little bit. Um, cocktail wise, there was a cocktail that Felice Urban Cafe on Larchmere unfortunately has closed, but that they made called the 1909, which is comprised of rye whiskey. I like rye. It's spicier, cuts through the drink, sweet vermouth. So it's sort of like an old, uh, Manhattan, but then that also required green chartreuse and Angostura and orange bitters. And I think that that's particularly in the cold, colder months, a really nice cocktail with depth and complexity. That is yeah. a very, like, barista-level <laughs> answer. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. <laughs> like, oh, no, that's great. <laughs> Actually, uh, um, yeah. every time I go up to Ontario at the Duty Free, I grab a, a Lagavulin 16. Oh, we'd every be friends. time, yeah. Uh, coolest, coolest. Uh, and uh, I started doing this tradition. I went down, I uh, was with a band. Uh, we went down to see the Eclipse Oh. In Nashville. Cool. Um, and uh, and I bought a bottle for that and had everybody sign it. And so if I if I buy a bottle and I go do something interesting with it, I always have everybody sign it. And so I have a couple of a couple That's really of bottles cool. like sitting around with just signatures on it from different people that uh, all Lagavulin. That, yeah, all Lagavulin that I've shared with you know those particular folks. I'll drink a lot of scotch as well, but like I tended to gravitate toward that one. It's, it's, you know, it's not cheap. I'd like to savor those things, but it's, it's smoky, but it's complex and it's smooth. It's just, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And hence, hence why I buy it at the duty free. Oh, like (laughs) It's got to get hip to that. It's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely like I only buy a few a year, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. not a, it's not a daily drinker. Yeah. Uh, I wish, man, if I had the (laughs) capacity. (laughs) Settle in with your church warden pipe and your nice that's right. uh, bathrobe oh, and your many an leather-bound books. <laughs> a good record. Do you have a favorite chord? Chord? Um, oh, gosh, that's that's a hard question. Um, I like a lot of, like, parallel major minor stuff. I think that's pretty fun. Um, six, nine chords are really fun. Um you know, that half diminished business. <laughs> but in terms of one chord, if I must choose, I think um, whatever inversion you want to do up and down the neck, um, like a major, a major chord, um, where, you, you know, on the guitar, you obviously have a lot of double, like C major would be C, E, G, C, E, so you have an octave there and an, another octave with the third, but putting that fifth in the bass, that G in the bass, that just like really, um, it, it adds, it adds a layer of density and, and you're not quite settled, but you're home. I don't know. I, I like the, the one with the fifth in the bass. Do you have a favorite animal? Ooh, I do like animals. Um, when I was young, it was definitely a bearded dragon. I've never had the privilege of owning one of those. Um, I do really like dogs. I don't have a dog. I live in an apartment right now, but whenever we get a house, we'll probably get a dog. Um, but not just any dog, you know. I like golden retrievers. I like beagles. I like mutts. Yeah. Lizard dog somewhere. Lizard dog? Lizard, Lizard dog. Yeah. <laughs> we can make that happen. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's gene splicing going on nowadays. We could do something really bizarre. We may regret. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite microphone? Oh, yeah. Um, shoot, I'm tr- I am should know this. I uh, Yes, I use it for recording vocals all the time, and you would know it. Um, I'm embarrassed that I don't can't remember the specific like number. 
think it's Audio Technica. Can I look at my phone? Absolutely, go for All it. All right, I'll just slice this out. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, it's just a good like workhorse microphone. Well, the SM57, of course. Right. Actually, yeah, I'm changing my answer to that. The SM57 because you can throw that against the wall. You can track guitars, vocals. Like if you're gonna buy one microphone, I would say maybe that one. It's affordable. It's a good mic. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite flavor? I tend to like spicy and salty over sweet. Favorite mood? Uh, a favorite mood, I'd just say grounded and centered, whether that be in an spheric space or personally. Do you have a favorite Muppet? <laughs> um, Kermit the Frog. Nice. <laughs> personally, I believe that people have just as much of a chance to connect with someone over a similar liking of something as a hating mm -hmm. of something. Mm -hmm. So now we're moving to the um, cynical portion of the questions. Sure. Uh, do you have a least favorite food? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I do. There's certain foods that I don't really eat. Like, I don't eat deviled eggs. Just can't do it. I, I, the way that, or like most hard boiled eggs, not into it. I've learned to like soft boiled eggs, but I, grew up with hard boiled eggs where the yolks were gray and it just smelled like sulfur and it turned me off so badly. So yeah, hard boiled, poorly made or deviled eggs. No go. Do you have a least favorite movie or television show? Yeah. I don't like watch a ton, but a uh, movie, like just a bad movie. <laughs> um. So I'm pretty old school when it comes to films. I oftentimes will go to the library still and like check out a DVD. Oh. Um, and I have access to different streaming services, but. Um, a movie, gosh, we started to watch this one movie that like came up on Netflix. I will admit I didn't finish it, but that's because it was so bad. Um, it was something about a pizza place in New England and like Julia Roberts was in it. Hmm. Mystic Pizza. I just remember like watching like 45 minutes and being like, I can't endure another 45 minutes <laughs> and turning it off. Oh, that's great. Uh, Do you have a least favorite uh, sound or noise? Um, sure, yeah. Uh, I don't like nails on a chalkboard. Uh, yeah, that gives me the eebie-jeebies. That one. Um, or also one that perturbs me to no end. This might be a dying on the hill kind of answer. Like someone who like endlessly is clearing their throat and clearly needs to see like a dentist or a doctor because there's like a serious phlegm situation going on and it just, you know, it's not just in the morning. It's like perpetual throughout the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't have a conversation without them. I'm not gonna do it, but yeah. Yuck. I understand that. Mm. Now I'm really self-conscious because I've been having kind of a phlegmy day. Oh. I, <laughs> and I, well, I've coughed a couple of times trying to get it out. Ryan, don't worry. I know. I'm not. I'm, I'm, we're I'm we're only, past that. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate you tolerating my noises. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Do you have a least favorite mundane or daily activity? I don't, I don't enjoy like folding laundry. Some people do. I do it regularly because it's a necessity, but I usually listen to a podcast to mm -hmm. <laughs> redirect my mind. I do the same thing, but that's why I like folding laundry. Uh, it gives me yeah. an excuse to permit myself to indulge in a podcast that I otherwise wouldn't. Well, that reframing is very helpful to me. I'll take that with me today. Do you have a least favorite sport? Um, to watch, to participate in any of the above. Justify it however you like. Sure. Um... I, this is probably an unpopular answer. I really struggle with football. Um, I know we're in Ohio and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a cool sport, like rugby is cool, but I think all the injury stuff needs to be addressed. I mean, I know it's trying to be addressed, but it's just, it's really violent. And if there is a way to play the game and have it be less violent, I might like it more, but I struggle with football. 
American football, not football, you know. Right. Yeah. Nice. Good answer. Um, do you have a least favorite season? Because in Cleveland, I guess we get them all. Yeah. Which I like. I, I don't struggle with seasonal affective disorder, and I try my darndest to get outside every day. That's, that's like part of my sanity, even if it's just a quick evening walk. Um, I think that transition period from winter, although our winters are less winter-like than they ever were, and early spring is difficult because not only is it cold, but with the rain mixture, it makes like getting outside less comfortable and mud, just mud everywhere. Um, so that, if I had to pick one, I'd say that's my least favorite season. I would agree. That's but fortunately, my... that's when St. Patty's Day rolls around and there's some good beers coming out. And <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a least favorite mode of travel? The RTA bus. <laughs> yes. They're always late. Or always number statements. They are often late. And that questionable substance on the seat is as well as the RTA bus, the Greyhound bus, I've taken that many times. If, if you're taking one on a long trip, uh, you might understand, but you know the bus isn't scheduled to stop for another hour and a half, and you, you just really have to go. Do you use that bathroom? Right. <laughs> when the odors that come from it and the sounds that have come from it from other fellow passengers make you want to coat yourself in Febreze and bleach <laughs> <laughs> so definitely least favorite do you have a least favorite word <laughs> we talk in the urban dictionary here we're just like every two you know, months a new few new words get in. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i just put it on there to see what kind of answers i get okay um i think because of because this word was used so it was used far too often when i was growing up sometimes the word like perturbs me it's just a stand-in mm -hmm. for so many other things and like you don't really like that it's it's like annoying <laughs> <laughs> i mean i w i won't die on a hill about this one but like i like like just don't like know like how to like respond to you <laughs> That was a way better one than I did. <laughs> that was good. All right. We are nearing the uh, end of our questions. Uh, thank you so much for for sitting down and talking to me. We've gone sure. for at least an hour at this point. So, <laughs> it's my uh, privilege. Thanks for having yeah, me. Absolutely. Um, so what are your plans for the future? Well, I'm getting married this year, so that's a big plan. I'm taking a lot of time and energy. Thank you very much. Very excited. Very grateful. Um, I would like to um, take some of these songs. I'll be playing some of them to tomorrow. Um, and I'd like to record them. Maybe just three, put out like a little mini EP kind of deal. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just <laughs> get married, record some music, which might will hopefully be in the next calendar year, but we'll see. Um, I'd like to have a few more bike trails that I want to hit up this in these warmer months. Um, spend more time with my nieces and nephews. Uh, and um, I actually something one of one of the, my most favorite things that I enjoy holistically in music is arranging. Um, doesn't matter the genre, and I love arranging other people's music. Um, so I, I'd love to do more of that, or work with bands or solo artists, whether they're in pop music, popular music or not and um, do more arranging projects, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like our potential audience to know about yourself, your music, any shameless plugs, all, <laughs> all right here as we wrap up? Um, come to Cleveland Rocks and support the songwriter. I don't know if this will go out by, by then, but um, I, I'm not gonna be playing out too much this year. Um, I work more than full time and um, wedding planning and so forth. But um, just keep an eye on my website, morganmccaskey.com, and social media at morganmccaskey because it's because I will. 
be putting out some some recordings in the next, I'll say one to two years, even though that's a long time. But mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. Our, uh, our guest has been Morgan McCaskey, and uh, this is Cleveland Rocks Shop Talk.